Welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia, and the Morgan and the West Virginia University Coliseum. That is the site of the Women's Big 12 Gymnastics Championships. What started out as an uncertain season has turned into an exciting one, and today will be no exception with these conference championships. It should be a good one. I'm John Roethlisberger, joined once again by one of the most decorated gymnasts in American history, Alicia Sacramone Quinn. Alicia, here we are at the postseason. Can you believe it? We didn't know if the season would happen. It did. It's been a great one, but what can we expect today? very exciting day. We have four teams vying for the Big 12 championship title. It's going to be a tight battle between Oklahoma and Denver, but the team that has the most on the line here tonight is West Virginia. They're at home, but they need to qualify to regionals, which they are actually hosting. So they need a big score tonight to secure their spot in that postseason continuation. So we've got some stars collegiately here. Two of the best in the entire country in the Big 12. One for Denver, one for Oklahoma. Talk about them, Alicia. Denver's Lindsey Brown has been a fantastic leader for this squad. She is one of the top gymnasts in the country, ranking the top three on uneven bars, floor exercise, and the all-around. She's the lone gymnast to lead the conference at NQS on multiple events. And then for Oklahoma, we have Anastasia Webb. She is finally getting the recognition she deserves. She's been considered one of the most underrated NCAA gymnasts in the nation. She competed in every single competition in her career. She has a great track record, and she's finally getting her time to shine. Those two will be a lot of fun to watch. Maggie Nichols is retired, and now it's the Anastasia Webb Show for the Sooners. We've got some great athletes. The Big 12 Women's Gymnastics Championships, Rotation 1, right around the corner. season is upon us. Once these conference championships are over, it is on to regionals and then the NCAA championships. Regionals April 2nd through the 3rd. The NCAA semifinals will be the 16th and then that all exciting final. Four teams make it for that final round and it is going to be a good one. Alicia, that new format is so awesome with just four teams going head to head to head on that final day. It's an awesome night of gymnastics. Here is the rules for the Big 12 Gymnastics Championships. Just like the regular season, four apparatus. They will be running simultaneously. A lot going on. Each team can put up six athletes on each event. The top five scores count. That's very critical. We keep an eye on that. They can drop the low score. So if a team has a fall, a major break, they can drop that score from their total. They add those scores up, and that is their team final. And the highest score wins. There's four judges for the postseason on each event as well. So a little coaching change for the Denver Pioneers. Melissa Kucher reinhardt has been uh, contact traced. She's gotten in close contact with somebody who had COVID. Out of the abundance of caution, they have kept her home. And now Linus Gaveka, the associate head coach, in some respects, Alicia, he's the interim head coach tonight, at least for one <laughs> night, right? Hopefully Melissa is fine, but he's uh, certainly capable, I would imagine. Oh, definitely. These athletes have been working with the whole coaching staff this whole season, so it probably is a little bit stressful to not have their head coach there, but they will adjust accordingly, and I think the rest of the Denver coaching staff can handle this just fine. This is where all the athletes will begin, the teams rather, will begin. Oklahoma, the highest ranked team, they will start on the bars. Denver on balance being the tough place to start, but if you can hit and get that behind you, certainly could be some momentum. Iowa State, they will go Olympic order by starting on the vault. In West Virginia, they will start on their highest scoring event, the floor exercise. As we see the Iowa State Cyclones getting ready to go on the vault. Alicia, I got to think with the coaching uh, change for Denver, you know, this whole season has been uncertainty. You almost think it just fits right into the whole MO of 2021. Oh, for sure. These athletes are probably like, well, you know, if it fits, might as well keep it going in this crazy year that we've been having. But, you know, I think Denver. It has the toughest start on beam, but once beam's done, it's kind of smooth sailing after that. So if they can go and hit this first event, I think they could build some great momentum going into the remaining of the competition. So this is our quad box, as we like to call it. And this is all four events, all four teams. The nice thing about having four teams is no one's on a bye, so everyone's competing. The hard part is following each event as they're going on simultaneously. So we'll do our best to let you know where everybody is 
throughout, down in that bottom left corner. That is one of the best gyms in the country. That is Lindsey Brown starting things off for Denver, Iowa State, as we mentioned, on vault, Oklahoma on bars, and West Virginia on the floor exercise. Lindsay opening up with a nice front toss to back handspring. Nice start for Iowa State on vault, kicking off with a nice Yurchenko full, just a small hop on that landing. Lindsay's in her senior year. She's had a fantastic career at Denver. Lindsay Brown is the number three ranked gymnast in the country in the all around and number 20 in the nation on beam. What a way to kick off that competition. Stuck her gainer full dismount off the side. You know, they may not have their head coach, but I think they're came to play tonight, today, I should say. Ab absolutely. They are uh, starting off with one of the best gymnasts in the country in your beam rotation. That is not a bad place to be. Certainly built some confidence there. Now we're over on the vault for Iowa State. We saw one of their vaulters go while we were in the quad box. That was Phoebe Turner who started things off. This is Emily Hong, who will be the second gymnast to go for them. We talk with Coach Jay Ronane coming into this competition. You can see him back right there of your shot. And he talked about how, yeah, they're not favorites and they might need some help from Oklahoma in, in the form of having them make mistakes. But he said, we just need to keep it close and look for our opportunity. But we have got to be almost perfect. It's always anybody's competition in a gymnastics meet. There can be falls, there can be mistakes. So you never know what's gonna happen. So we have a scoring issue on vault. So we're gonna jump back over to the balance beam with Abby Thompson. She'll be the second athlete obviously to go, waiting for Lindsey Brown's score. You gotta wonder, Alicia, we've seen a little bit of slow scoring here and there during the season, but you got to kind of find your footing, I think, if you're the judges here in the postseason. Postseason judging sometimes can be a little bit different than the regular season and feel like they've got to get these first few ones right because that's kind of going to dictate what happens the rest of the evening. Some of the delays are technology. You know, the judges are not used to using this stuff. You're, you usually just have your little score. You do your calculations, lift it up. So it's, um, it's all about adjusting. The judges have had a tough time this season, but they are making it work. A nice Yurchenko full, which was stuck by Emily Hong. It's only two vaults in, but they're doing exactly what Iowa State needs to do. They got to hit. They got to hit clean. Stick some landings. That cannot be emphasized enough. If you are an underdog, and pretty much everybody is against the Oklahoma Sooners, you have got to stick a lot of landings. And so far, Iowa State looks great. Nice, the handstand to toe shoot. Catherine Lavasser from Oklahoma, the second gymnast to go for the Sooners. Beautiful double layout, and she sticks the landing. It's technique and landings and all the fine-tuning elements to gymnastics that Oklahoma just excels at. She followed Olivia Troutman's 9.85, a very nice lead-off score to build on if you're the Sooners. An embarrassment of riches, there's KJ Kindler in her 15th season as the Sooner head coach. Now we're gonna jump over to the floor exercise. McKenna Lennon for West Virginia. She is a senior out of Canton, Michigan. Gymnastics America, very well respected gymnastics club in the state of Michigan. McKenna follows Kiana Yancey's 9.85, a season high for her. What a start for the Mountaineers. Opens up with a front handspring, front one and half to back layout, step out. Alicia had mentioned what is on the line for West Virginia, trying to qualify to the regional championships, which they are hosting. 
So they want that team in there. They got to be in the top 36 in the country. They're 38th right now. And talking with their head coach, Jason Butts, he said he feels like they need to put up a mid-196, a 196.5, he feels like to go a long way to getting them to the regionals. A 196.5 means they will average a 9.825 throughout today's competition in their counting score. So keep that in mind as we watch the, the Mountaineers. A 9.825 is the magic number for them. Open handspring front double full for McKenna on that next tumbling pass. Very nice o or routine for the Mountaineers. She had good leaps and jumps and great tumbling. So quickly back over to Vault. This was moments ago, Kelsey Boychuk for Iowa State, who was on a roll early. Another high Yurchenko full, just small hops in those landings, but these vaults have been very well controlled, and that's exactly what this Iowa State squad needs to do to keep their score in contention. Catherine Leviser for Oklahoma, 9.9 .9 in the second spot for the Sooners. Lindsey Brown, a 9.875 on balance beam for her. Emily Hong, a 9.875, a career high for her in the Cyclones. She was the second vaulter to go. And we are back to the beam with Callie Schlotman for the Denver Pioneers. Abby Thompson went right before her, waiting on that score. You mentioned there are four judges here tonight. The highest score and the lowest score are dropped, and the remaining two are averaged to get the athlete's official score for the event. Um, so in regular season, there's only two judges. Tonight, there's or today, there's four. Uh, so that's probably another thing that makes this a little more complicated. And there's also four sets of eyes seeing those deductions. So things you may have gotten away with in the regular season may get caught here in the postseason. So if scores are a little lower than maybe you typically see, that might be one reason why, as Callie waits for the green flag. She's a sophomore from Savage, Minnesota in Legacy Gymnastics has a high score on this event this season of a 9.825. Nice back handspring layout step out for Callie as her acro series. The pressure is on Callie. Abby Thompson right before her, a 9.1. So a great start from Lindsey Brown, but a major break from their second gymnast. That means the last four athletes for Denver have got to hit. Otherwise, they put themselves in a big hole early, and you cannot do that when you're going up against the number one team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners, if you hope to get a Big 12 championship. But she stayed on, which is obviously for the best. But the judges will give her a deduction for that. That can't spring. Gainer full off the side, and she sticks the landing. So that routine was pretty good. Aside from that one little wobble, that routine was well controlled. Back over to vault for Iowa State. Chanko, one and a half. Oh, she almost stuck it for Michaela Maxwell. The redshirt sophomore from Las Vegas, Nevada, keeping the momentum going here for Iowa State. Head coach Jay Ronane said it. If we can keep it close, if we can be as near perfect as possible, we might just put ourselves in a situation where, given the opportunity, could have a big upset over the heavily favored Oklahoma Sooners. Sophia Steinmeier, their third gymnast that went, scored a 9.9. .9. Things could not be starting off better for the Cyclones. So the fifth gymnast to go for Oklahoma on the uneven bars is Carrie Thomas. 
She will be doing three events for the Sooners tonight. She's the number 14th ranked gymnast in the country and All-American on the uneven bars, a junior Olympic national champion on this event. She has competed uneven bars in every competition this season and has been 100%, has not had a break all year long. Carrie is a Florida girl, so she is close to my heart. Trained at American Twisters, one of the best gyms in South Florida. Uh, I've had the pleasure of coaching her a little bit when, help, when I was helping out there, and she is fantastic. Such a great athlete, so sweet, funny, works her butt off. And she's been telling her coaches at Oklahoma she's going to come back for a victory lap. She wants to take up that year of eligibility that she didn't get due to COVID. Good for her. The wait is over. Toe hand to blind change. Nice straddle, Jaeger. Bale handstand. Double layout dismount. Oh, oh, she almost had that stick. If she just oh, she picked her working. chest up a smidge, she would have had it. She was working that landing. Now the last vaulter to go for Iowa State. This is Addie De Jesus. A big one and a half. Needed some more control on that landing. Does have a decent size hop, but that vault had some ups. She is the number nine ranked gymnast in the country on that event. That is a 10-0 start, and you know she wanted that stuck landing so bad, Alicia. They've had an outstanding rotation, and that would have been a big time exclamation point. opens up with a double tuck. West Virginia scores so far in floor exercise, 9-8-5, 9-8-5, they were their first two score season highs, and that third score was a 9-8. Obviously we got right into the middle of that routine, but happy nonetheless. West Virginia and Iowa State, the two underdogs, seem very happy so far early in this competition as we see Audrey Davis, the anchor of the Oklahoma Sooners. Eagle grip to huge Pike Yeager. Pack Salto with great form, toes pointed, legs perfectly together. Eagle grip. Double front. And she sticks it. That routine wow. was phenomenal. Alicia's calling the first 10 of the night. That was exquisite. The handstands were nailed. The question is, the high score for Oklahoma so far in bars is a 9-9. Carrie Thomas right before Audrey went 9-8-5. Would they jump all the way to a 10? This is Jessica Hutchinson for Denver. She is the fifth gymnast to go. Callie Schlotman, who we saw, got a 9.8 for her effort. Jessica did have a slight pause on that connection, which probably will be acting as her acro series. So I'll be interested to see if the judges give her a 10.0 um, start value because the rule is as long as your arms keep moving and you will get the connection. But if there is a slight pause, then that connection will be broken. And she needs that connection to start from a 10.0. Jessica is one of four all-arounders competing for the Denver University Pioneers today. Cartwheel gainer full off the side. Soft legs on that landing. I would have loved to see her land with her chest up higher then that she would have been able to control a stick if she was able to do so. That
double tuck. A little bit uncontrolled on that landing. Lots of height, great tumbling. West Virginia just really needs to focus on those fine details, and that's where they can save some deductions. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship first round begins Sunday at noon Eastern. ABC will have Middle Tennessee at, and Tennessee at 2 Eastern, followed by Jackson State and Baylor. And ESPN has Mercer, South Carolina, then High Point and UConn. All games are also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Match, March Madness is upon us. What a great time of year if you're a sports fan. And gymnastics has got its own March Madness. An outstanding regional coming up later this month, early April. See Audrey Davis is scoring 9.95. Alicia, where did they find that half tenth? Honestly, I don't know. That routine was beautiful. I would have given it a 10. Here's Isabel Mabanta from Denver. She is the anchor on this event. Alexandria Ruiz in the fourth spot got a 9.875. Jessica Hutchinson, who we just saw, a 9.725. They are going to have to count that. You do not want to count scores lower than really mid 9.8s if you want to win a Big 12 championship. Isabel with a beautiful back handspring layout step out. Beautiful switch half, split jump to beat jump. Really showcasing her flexibility, hitting 180 degrees. Side aerial back full. She went out of the screen, but I'm assuming she <laughs> did a good landing. <laughs> She's smiling, and they need a big one right there. I know it's only one rotation, but Oklahoma put up a big number on the uneven bars. And if you're Denver, you don't want to let them get too far off ahead of you. Denver, obviously the, the obvious team to maybe upset the number one team in the country, the Oklahoma. However, this is their high. Closes out with a double tuck. Not going to lie, that routine spoke to me. I felt the, the choreography, <laughs> the music. I was just really into it. <laughs> if it's speaking to Alicia, you know they did something good, and they did. What a rotation for West Virginia. The host team trying to keep their regional hopes alive. They will be hosting that regional in a couple weeks. We are off and running. The first rotation is done here at the Big 12 Women's Gymnastics Championships. When we come back, we're going to talk about maybe the greatest team in the country over the last half decade, the Oklahoma Sooners. They are still the defending champs. They won it in 2019. Can they do it again in 2021? I was an 18-year head coach at Oklahoma. In total, her teams claimed eight Big 8 conference titles, made 16 NCAA regional appearances, and took three trips to the NCAA Championships. Switzer also coached the first individual national champion in OU history, Kelly Garrison. Oklahoma honors Becky Switzer in celebration of Women's History Month. KJ Kindler following in the steps of Becky Switzer, who really set the stage here at Oklahoma, and Oklahoma set the stage here tonight as well. 49-5, they've got a slight lead over Iowa State. What? 
the standings are upside down. Denver down there in fourth. They got a little bit of work to do. But this Oklahoma team, Alicia, they have really done a lot in the last half decade. Hard to argue that they haven't been the greatest team in the country during that span. No doubt about it. KJ Kindler has definitely created a dynasty. Under her guidance, they have won four national championships and 11 Big 12 titles. So they know exactly what they're doing and what is on the line for this team this year. They want that title. They want to be champions again. And so they have a lot of pressure riding on them. It hasn't been a typical competition season for this 2021 squad. They've had a lot of injuries that they've been trying to bounce back from, but they have the legacy to uphold. So they are definitely going to be doing their best here for the rest of that. And you can see what they've done over the last 12 years, 11 Big 12 titles, nine NCAA Finals appearances. And that number at the bottom, probably the one that K.J. Killer's most proud of, four national championships, the most over the last half decade. And uh, she is going to be going for another one. They are back at the top again heading into the postseason. Heading into the rotation number two, a lot of gymnastics yet to go. Oklahoma, they are in the top spot, but Denver trying to recover from that balance beam performance. Long way to go, rotation two, right around the hook corner. Former Board of Trustee member Joy S. Burns was one of the most impactful leaders at the University of Denver. She advocated for Title IX and she paved the way for DU to become a Division I program. After her passing last summer, we decided to dedicate this season to her. Denver honors Joyous Burns for Women's History Month. So here we are back at the Big 12 Championships after Rotation 1. Oklahoma has a lead by .175, but it's not over Denver Pioneers. It's over Iowa State there in the second spot. The highlight for the Sooners, Audrey Davis on bars, a 9.95. That was a career high for her. And what Alicia and I kind of, we kind of think it should have been a 10. I mean, that's where I'm at. I don't know where you're at, Alicia. That was a pretty much a perfect performance. I don't know where that deduction even came from. If I'm sitting here being honest, I was like, that's going to be a 10. I didn't want to call it because if I was wrong, you know, I don't like being wrong. You're, you're the weatherman of calling scores, is what I think you <laughs> called yourself earlier this season. It's true. Welcome for those of that, those of you who are with wrestling. We are at the Big 12 Women's Gymnastics Championships, heading into rotation two. West Virginia is on vault. Iowa State on bars. Oklahoma moves to the balance beam as we see KJ Kindler giving her athletes some motivation before they begin that event in Denver trying to catch up they're in the fourth spot a surprise for them they will be on the floor exercise so Alicia what does Denver have to do to get themselves back into this they are in an un unfamiliar territory being in the fourth position after one rotation you know they have the hardest event behind them now and the remaining events they can do very well on so I think it's just turning the page it wasn't perfect they can bounce back and make up those points that they're lacking right now that was Kiana Yancey for West Virginia on vault. That's Olivia Troutman on the balance beam. Alexandria Ruiz is the Denver gymnast starting things off on the floor exercise. Alexandria is a junior out of Lake Murray, Florida in ace gymnastics. Side straddle full, straddle full. I want to be real nitpicky on that jump pass. The first straddle full wasn't all the way around, so then she kind of kept it turning to try to overcome the first short jump. So I wonder if the judges are going to knock her as much as I would for that one. Front tuck step out to double tuck. Good start for Denver. Lena Skaveka, former Iowa gymnast, actually was an NCAA high bar champion for the Hawkeyes in 2003, leading the way for them today with Melissa Kucher-Ronhart sidelined as we move over to vault and Rachel Horning. Yurchenko full, big step on that landing. Had a lot of height on that vault though. 
West Virginia just needs to really be focused on sticking these landings to keep up with their scores. Kiana Yancey, the first gymnast to go on vault, scoring 9.8, so good start for them. Now over to the uneven bars with Iowa State. Michaela Maxwell. Nice straddle Jaeger for Michaela. Shoot over just short of the handstand. Double layout, small hop on that landing, but a nice clean bar routine for Michaela. Iowa State feeling it. Madeline Langkamp started things off with a career high 9.8 for them. We're back over to vault. This is Kayla Yancey, her sister Kiana led things off. Another Yurchenko fall, a little better control on that landing. So. Good job for West Virginia putting up these solid vaults. Over to floor exercise, Rosie Casali. Opens with a piked full in. Rosie's freshman out of Weddington, North Carolina and Southeastern Gymnastics. Switch half, Wolfel. Rosie was a highly regarded level 10 gymnast, qualified to the Nastia Lucan Cup Finals twice, which is not an easy event to qualify for, the all-star competition of level 10 gymnasts. Punch front for Rosie's second pass. Alexandria Ruiz right before her, a season high 9.875. That was a nice floor team. Rosie only had two tumbling passes. She opened up with an E value skill and then had that nice connection pass in the middle. So she didn't need a third tumbling pass, which was fantastic. Denver working hard to get back into it. Not that they were that far out of it, but when you're in fourth, you got a little bit of work to do. They're getting work done here on floor exercise. Rachel Horning for West Virginia, a 9.75 for her vault. That is a season high for her as well. Michaela Maxwell got a 9.8. For those of you that have been watching on ESPN News, we switch over to ESPN2 for continued coverage of the Big 12 Gymnastics Championships. Now we're looking at Kiana Lewis getting ready to vault for West Virginia. There's head coach Jason Butts in the background. Kayla Yancey score a 9.725 for her vault. So they are going to count a score in the 9.7s. Rachel Horning has a 9.75. So these last three scores have to be big. Big Yurchenko full. Just that small hop on that landing that should score a little bit better than the 9.75 we saw earlier. So hopefully they can drop that one of those lower 9.7s. Nonetheless, West Virginia doing what they have to do. They got to come in and do their job. It's not like basketball or football. There's no defense. You control your own performance. You've got to go out there and do your best gymnastics. And so far, I got to say they are. Michelle Waldron, who went right before Keanu Lewis, put up a 9.8. That's more like it. We're going to go back over to the floor exercise with Abby Thompson. Abby opens up with a double pike. Abby's a freshman from Sanford, Florida. Attended Orlando Metro Gymnastics. Very well-respected club in the Orlando area. 
produce numerous national and world team members. Front one and a half. Rosie Casale put up a 9.875 right before Abby Thompson performed. That is a career high for her. Triple full last pass. Thomas up in the ante with ending it with an E pass. You do not see that very often in collegiate gymnastics, even in elite gymnastics. Honestly, Alicia, that is a tough dismount. Done nicely. Now over to the balance beam. Carly Woodard follows Jenna Dunn's 975. Olivia Troutman led the balance beam off for Oklahoma with a 9.3. So that lead that Oklahoma had after one, they are giving it away. Four gymnasts left. They all have to hit or Oklahoma will count a miss. Alicia, you always say the competition doesn't start till you get to beam and that is showing itself to be true here tonight. Balance beam is definitely the make or break event in women's gymnastics. A lot of pressure on the remaining athletes for Oklahoma. Front toss to beat jump. Switch leap to split leap. Ariel, back full. Just a small movement of that back foot for Carly. She did what she had to do, hitting that routine, though, get things back on track and stop the bleeding. March is Women's History Month, and we are excited to broadcast the Women's Frozen Four Championship game for the first time ever. Tonight, Wisconsin takes on Northeastern at 7.30 Eastern time on ESPNU and the app. The last time the title game was played, it was Wisconsin that won it in 2019, and this is Northeastern's first time playing in the championship game. That should be a good one. Abby Pearson anchoring the West Virginia vault rotation. That was a nice Yurchenko full. Small hop in that landing, but great form in the air. That was a real big Yurchenko. That looked like she was waiting to stick it or maybe put another half twist on it. That was solid. Carly Woodward score, Woodward score rather, a 9.85. On balance beam. Now Reagan Smith just mounted the balance beam again. The pressure is on the Sooners. Back handspring layout step out. Reagan is no stranger to be competing in high pressure situations. A member of the U.S. national team. A fantastic gymnast. Straddle half, two back handspring swing down. Reagan was the USA national champion when she was an elite gymnast, went on to be a member of the 2018 world team that won gold. She was also an, also an alternate on the 2016 Olympic team for the United States. Back handspring, gainer full, and she sticks that landing. Gotta love it. Nice performance. 
from Reagan. They needed it. They have got two athletes to go, Carrie Thomas and Anastasia Webb. They need two hits. Back over to the uneven bars. Adding to Jesus, finishing up her bar routine for Iowa State. Nice double layout. Man. Another solid rotation for Iowa State. Three nine eights to start the rotation. They slipped a nine seven seven five in there, but a nine eight five from Jay Devella right in the fifth spot. We'll just wait for Addie to Jesus to score, which will round things out for the Cyclones, who are in second place after one rotation. So far, they've got to be thrilled. They are having a fantastic competition. You know. They are doing exactly what they said they were going to do. They have to just keep it close and do the best that they can do because everything else is out of their control. Back over to floor exercise with Jessica Hutchinson. Denver's got three, nine, eight, seven, fives to start this rotation. One season high and two career highs. You cannot ask for anything more than that. Trying to capitalize on some of Oklahoma's early mistakes in this rotation. And handspring front double full. Switch Make that four. Full. Sorry, Alicia. Make that four 9.875s for Denver on this event. Are we realistically saying that all of their scores are the exact same? They, that's that's what I'm being told. <laughs> yes, there you Very go. Interesting. The graphics never lie. I'm one and a half to front layout. Sounds like you want to see the judges score sheet, Alicia. Am I am I reading between the lines there correctly? I mean, it's just interesting. Four uh, nine eight seven fives back to back to back to back. Closing out with a front handspring Rudy to straddle jump. Nice routine for Jessica. I don't know if you guys noticed, she kind of stumbled off the mat doing her dance after her first tumbling pass. You can see in her face that she was mad about it, but definitely covered it up with her choreography. But fellow gymnasts would know, anytime you trip over a mat, you, you want to kick yourself a little bit. You're like, come on. I knew the mat was there the whole time. I'm going to give that routine a 9.875. I'm just going to bet the odds <laughs> as Carrie Thomas mounts the balance beam, the senior from Coral Springs, Florida, number 12 in the nation on this event. Nice, solid side summy for Carrie. Reagan Smith tied her season high with a 9.95 for her performance. Beautiful back handspring layout step out. Switch leap, switch leap to split jump. A little crooked on that arrow, but she made that dismount work. The poise of the Sooners, they look like veterans. Some mistakes to start off with, which could shake the rest of a lineup of a typical team, but not the Sooners. They have been rock solid. 985, 995, and we'll wait for Kerry Thomas's score, and they've got Anastasia Webb left to go. Now over to the floor exercise. The number two gymnast in the country on this event. The number three gymnast in the all-around, Lindsey Brown, senior out of Kansas City, Missouri. There's Anastasia Webb. She is the number four gymnast in the all-around rankings in the country. She will be anchoring the beam rotation for Oklahoma. A lot of pressure on her. This could be a pivotal moment in this competition. Lindsey Brown, if she can hit big on floor exercise, and if should Anastasia Webb have any mistakes, that will open the door for the Pioneers to climb back into this.
Mackenzie Brown opening up with a huge double layout. Jessica Hutchinson on floor exercise, a 9.875. You're lying. I would never lie to you. Lindsay. Lindsay, you would not know it by watching her perform. Coming back from an Achilles tear last season as Anastasia Webb finishes a near perfect balance beam routine. Lindsay ending her routine with a double pike. And that's why she's ranked in the top three in the nation on the floor exercise. And that routine was near perfect. Two pieces of unbelievable gymnastics. Anastasia Webb on balance beam. Lindsey Brown on floor exercise. What a treat. M making it a game are the Denver Pioneers. Anastasia Webb sticking the landing halfway through this competition. Oklahoma trying to fend off the Pioneers, the Cyclones, and the Mountaineers. We're going to talk Big 12 award winners when we come back. decorated gymnast in Iowa State history. During her career from 2004 to 2007, Anson earned a program record eight All-America honors and three Big 12 titles. A two-time Big 12 Gymnast of the Year and Iowa State Female Athlete of the Year, Anson will be inducted to the Iowa State Letter Winners Club Hall of Fame this fall. Iowa State honors Janet Anson in celebration of Women's History Month. So our score after two rotations, Oklahoma, even with that rough start on beam, they maintain a comfortable lead. Denver just picks up a half-tenth, actually, even with that outstanding floor exercise rotation. Iowa State, they drop to the third spot. West Virginia, .65 out of first. But i got to tell you, all of these teams are performing well tonight, and it should be an exciting one on multiple levels heading down the stretch. So speaking of Big 12 and Big 12 championships, we have some award winners, Alicia, in this conference. As the gymnasts are doing their one-touch rotation, getting ready for that third rotation. Here are your Big 12 award winners in 2021, Alicia. So the all Big 12 gymnastic team consists of basically the top two all-arounders and then the top three athletes on each event so they are recognized for their outstanding performances all season long. A lot of Lindsey Brown and a lot of Anastasia Webb in there. A lot of Oklahoma as well obviously they have dominated this conference for a long time. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. With softball and baseball seasons in full swing, there's more than 200 matchups available along with the early rounds of both conference tournaments. Plus, it's the home for over 500 live events and original content. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Third rotation is right around the corner. We are halfway through this Big 12 Conference Championship. Sooners, they still got the lead, but Denver, they're surging. Can they catch the champs? You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. We are in Morgantown, West Virginia for the Women's Gymnastics Big 12 Championships. John Roethlisberger, Alicia Sacramone Quinn. We've had an exciting first rotation and two of the stars have not disappointed. Alicia Lindsey Brown and Anastasia Webb. Lindsey's balance beam routine was absolutely fantastic. It was the first event. She was the leadoff athlete and she went up and dominated. Their head coach isn't there and she made it seem like she was unaffected. She followed up that great performance on balance beam on the floor exercise showing everybody why she is number three in the nation on this event. And then Oklahoma's Anastasia Webb 
has been living up to her hype. She did a absolutely near flawless beam routine, scoring a 9.95, which honestly I thought it should have been a 10. It was stunning. Anastasia on bars, just showing why she's this team's leader and why many say she has been the most underrated gymnast in the NCAA. As we begin rotation number three, Anastasia Webb, by the, by the way, a .025 lead over Lindsey Brown in the all-around. Another thing we need to keep an eye on as we head into the last two rotations. They will be crowning individual event and all-around champions today as well, not just team champions. In this third rotation, Denver moves to the vault. West Virginia, the uneven bars. Iowa State to balance beam, and Oklahoma moves to the floor exercise. you got to feel like Alicia Oklahoma's got an advantage. They have beam behind them. And they weren't perfect, but they've got a lead with two very consistent events for them to go. Vault and floor are definitely two of their top events, so they could definitely extend their lead if they go and hit these routines the way, th the way these athletes can. Uh, Denver has a good, you know, good pace too. They they also have beam done, so they just need to hit these next two events and keep it close with Oklahoma. Getting things started with Jordan Draper on the floor exercise. Oklahoma ranked number five in the nation on this event. They have a high score this season of a 49.5, which is a 9.9 average. Jordan kicked that double pike open just a little bit too soon, causing her to land short on that double pike. The judges will take a deduction for that. Anytime you step forwards out of a tumbling pass when you're going backwards instead of backwards, it's considered a short landing. Beautiful for enhancement, front full, front full. Whip half, front one and a half. Chess was low on that landing. She could have used a, a little bit more height to get that one and a half all around, all the way around cleanly. But not a bad leadoff routine. Just a few small mistakes here and there. Alexandria Ruiz on the vault. Nice Yurchenko full, small hop on that landing. Now over to the uneven bars with Kendra Combs for West Virginia. Opens up with a Shaposh to Pac Salto. Slight leg separation as she moves between the bars. Line change full to immediate double tuck, and she sticks the landing. Very nicely done. Esperanza Abarca scores a 9.65 in the leadoff spot for West Virginia. Certainly going to want to build on that. Remember, the 9.825, the key number for West Virginia to get into those regionals. That's the one we're watching. Back over to Vault. Soup full for Emily Glenn. Almost stuck that landing, just shifted her weight to her heels a little bit too soon. You feel like Denver's got to make a little bit of a move here. They finished the, the competition on bars, an event where you can open yourself up to deductions, maybe harder to score. They've got to keep it close, don't you think, Alicia? They can't let Oklahoma extend that lead here in rotation three. If they want a shot at that title, they need to be sticking these vault landings because Oklahoma has that competitive edge on them, so they need to be near perfect to upset the Sooners. Evie Schopfer will be the next gymnast. She is a senior from Ames, Iowa, Triad Gymnastics. She is a former JO national champion on this, this event, has a high score this season of 
Kendra Combs, by the way, 9.825 for her uneven bar routine. They needed that. That is a season. Switch ring to pop wool full. Jordan Draper led off with a 9.8 for Oklahoma. Evie closes out with a double pike. So two for two for Oklahoma. They just got to stay on their feet. No major mistakes. Denver will come. They're going to have to put up some big numbers, but most importantly, they got to hit. Back over to Vault. A nice stuck here, Chanko full. From the angle we saw that, you could see a slight leg separation as she hits the vaulting table, but that Yurchenko full had so much height and control. That was really nice. Nice job from Jessica Hutchinson. Now Kelsey Boychik on the balance beam for Iowa State. Currently in third place after two rotations are the Cyclones. Again, head coach Jay Romain saying just keep it close and wait for an opportunity, maybe some mistakes by the big dogs, and they could jump in there. Beck Hanspring, Beck Hanspring layout step up for her Acro Series. The judges will give her a slight deduction for a soft back leg in her layout step out. A nice side aerial. Nice start for the Cyclones on beam. They let off with a 9.825. Followed that up with Phoebe Turner's 9.85. Season high for her. Gainer full. And she sticks the landing. Nice beam routine for Kelsey. Now Lindsey Brown for Denver. Ruchenko one and a half going for that stick. Unfortunately, has that just that small hop in the landing. That was a big vault. She's number 19 in the country on that event. Man, they needed that stuck landing. It feels like they almost have to stick the rest of the way. Now back to balance beam added to Jesus. Waits for her opportunity. Addie is no slouch in the all-around as well. She is tied for the 13th ranking in the country in the all-around. Has a high of a 39.6 this season. She's done a lot of heavy lifting for the Cyclones as well this year. She's competed all-around eight times. Head, head coach Jay Renee talks about how she has just been such a great addition to this Cyclone team. Just brings so much energy and leadership and inspiration to the rest of the athletes. She is a high level, high caliber gymnast. That can't spring layout step out with just a small balance check on the landing. Straddle jump, sheet jump. Iowa State really has an interesting roster. They are very international. Actually, six different countries other than the United States represented on their team. England, Canada, Puerto Rico, Peru, Spain, Australia. 11 athletes from those countries. It creates what Jay describes as a really awesome, exciting, and interesting team dynamic. Our wheel double full, and she sticks that landing. 
Great beam routine for Addy. Addy DeJesus doing what she's done. Junior out of Greenwich, Connecticut, and Darian YMCA Gymnastics. Trying to give the Cyclones a chance. Now back over to the even bars. Nice Pike Yeager to immediate overshoot. This is, this is Emily Holmes Hackard. Flying chain full. To immediate double tuck. And she sticks that landing. So another solid rotation for the Mountaineers. They did start out with that 9-6-5, but they should not have to count that one. They did have a score in the 9-7s, a 9-7-5 that they will have to count. Back over to vault, Abby Thompson. Yurchenko falls short on that landing. She hit the vaulting table with a pretty close shoulder angle, which didn't allow her to get enough height to perform that full twist with enough space to land with her chest up. So now back to the floor exercise. This is Emma LaPinta from Kurt Thomas School of Gymnastics. Kurt Thomas, one of the greatest American male gymnasts ever to put on a pair of grips. Unfortunately, passed away in 2020. Good friend of mine and an inspiration to a lot of young gymnasts in his era. Emma's done a nice job for Oklahoma, especially on floor exercise over the last couple of years. Starting to grow into other events as well. I'm gonna jump back over to the balance beam with Mike C. Semple. Solid rotation for the Cyclones. First three scores are 9.825, 9.85, and 9.8. Still waiting for Addy DeJesus' score to come in. Nice floaty back handspring layout step out. I know you love when I say that, John. <laughs> I do. Jump switch half to beat jump. Switch loop split jump. Aerial back full. Fighting for just that small Hold hop it. on the landing. <laughs> Holding on to that landing. Addy DeJesus scores in a 9.9 .9 for her. Iowa, Iowa State's got one gymnast left to go on the balance beam. NCAA Women's Basketball Championships first round begins Sunday at noon Eastern. ABC will have Middle Tennessee and Tennessee at 2 Eastern, followed by Jackson State and Baylor. And ESPN has Mercer, South Carolina, then High Point and UConn. All games are also available on the ESPN app. Oklahoma with a little extra time here. Emma LaPinta waiting to go. There is a score inquiry and that is a judging conference like I don't think we've ever seen before, Alicia. It looks, looks like a like welder's convention. Out there on the, on the competition floor. So typically coaches put an inquiry in when there is a discrepancy in the start value. That's the only time a coach can inquire about a score. So they are conferencing to see where the disconnect is. If we could only be a fly on the wall. You can see the scores. We're, we're a little delayed on the Denver vault scores. I think we're having a technical issue getting those scores put into the system. Obviously, we'll update you guys as soon as we are updated. West Virginia, they are done on the uneven bars. Emily Holmes Hacker got a 9.85. That is a career high for her. So they had two season highs, one career high. In their uneven bar rotation. West Virginia has to be thrilled with three events of four done. Now back over to balance beam while we wait for that floor exercise routine. Natalie Horowitz. Layout 
step up for Natalie's Acro Series. Natalie's a junior out of Long Meadow, Massachusetts. She attended Tim Daggett Gold Medal Gymnastics. That is a very familiar name in the, the men's world of gymnastics. Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett. Cat jump, two split half to B jump. Very nice lead connection. Toss. Gainer full off the side, and she sticks that landing. What can you say about the Cyclones? Another great rotation. They had a season high from Phoebe Turner, 985, a career high from Kelsey Boychek at a 98. And this number, Alicia, looks like it'll be another big one. This routine should score very well. It was a nice constructed routine and it was very packed with difficult skills. And then that beautiful list, dismount where she sticks that landing. The Cyclones are being stealthy right now. They are doing the game plan that their coaching staff wanted. Hit your gymnastics, hit it as clean as you can and put yourself in a position to maybe steal this at the end. I seem to remember a Super Bowl not that long ago where the, the lights went out and it seemed to turn the entire game. Now, I'm not going to say that this long judges conference is going to turn the tides of this competition, but if I'm a Emma LaPinta, Alicia, this weight is... And, and win their fifth national title and the 12th conference championship in KJ's tenure at Oklahoma. Now here we go finally with Emma LaPinta.
6-5 for that third Sooner Floor team. Day half split full. Emma's last pass. Double tuck. Considering she had to wait for 10 years, that floor routine went pretty well. A little bit short on that first pass, but finished the routine really strong. So the ju junior, worth the wait, Emma LaPinta, gets the job done in a tough spot, tough situation. A nice connection pass, that front fold of front layout. And close the routine out with that nice strong double. And again, they need hits from these last three athletes. Vanessa Dennis' score of a 9.65 is exactly the one that they want to drop. The scores for Denver on vault, meanwhile, are coming in, and they're good. They started off with a career-high 9.8 from Rosie Casali, and then a 9 fouled out with a 9.75, 9.9, 9.85, and anchored it with a 9.9 from Lindsey Brown. Abby Thompson's score is not in yet, but I'm guessing they will not most likely count that one. So very important with two gymnasts to go for Oklahoma. Carrie Thompson, Thomas rather, and Anastasia Webb. They need two hits. They got one from Emma LaPinta. Now they need two more to maintain that lead over the Pioneers. You know, one of the common themes we, we heard from all the coaches this season, Alicia, with the challenges with COVID and, and off-season training is, is handling the freshmen. Because usually the freshmen will get in and they'll get acclimated to the season. They'll be able to socialize with their teammates and, and kind of get comfortable on campus. And in a lot of situations, they were isolated to themselves. They couldn't take that time to get to know their teammates, to get to know the rigors of, of training and academics in a typical setting. And, and that has really been a challenge for a lot of schools. And, and Oklahoma is another one that brought that up. They usually get their freshmen in at the very beginning of the summer. And they can train them and get them up to speed. And they didn't get that opportunity. And that makes a lot of challenges for that new class coming in. KJ brought up a great point. She goes, the freshmen don't know the expectations, so they're sending workouts and telling them what they're doing, but the upperclassmen, they know what to expect. They know what their coaches want them to do. These freshmen are like, all right, I guess I could do this, but it may not be up to Oklahoma's typical standards. Carrie opening up with a huge double tuck. Double pike for Carrie's second tumbling pass. KJ Kimler getting into it in the sidelines, although very far on the sidelines. Looks like she's <laughs> kind of hiding back there in the shadows. Carrie's relatively new to the Oklahoma's floor lineup. Oh. Unfortunately, under-rotated that front layout. And this is a big moment in the Big 12 championships. The door has been swung open. Denver sitting by watching Oklahoma perform the floor exercise.
five, nailing 156 routines out of 164. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like those odds. Lindsey Brown in the all-around. Lindsey Brown putting up a 9-9 on vault. So keep that in mind as you're following the all-around totals. Get back one and a half to front full. Switch half, split full. Anastasia's last tumbling pass. Front, Rudy. Did you really just finish your floor team with her leg out of bounds? Oh my goodness. And again, not a major break, but that is a tenth of a point. And this meet is going to get tighter after this rotation. And that is one that she is going to want to have back. Keep that one in mind. If it comes down to that close of a competition, that moment right here, Alicia, what happened? She just really did not realize how close she was to the side of the floor until after she did it. And she was like, I'm just going to scoot it in. I feel like that Rudy rebound bounced her into the corner a little further than she expected. But man, what an exciting third rotation. It is anybody's meet heading into rotation number four. When we come back, we're going to look around the nation and the postseason and see who could win the national championship. Women's NCAA Championships coming up. Regionals April 2nd through the 3rd. And then the semifinals April 16th, followed by the National Championship April 17th. The most exciting gymnastics you will see on television. That is going to be awesome. Welcome back to the Big 12 Gymnastics Championships. We are through three rotations. We are at the West Virginia University Coliseum. John Rothsberger, Alicia Sacramone, Quinn. Alicia, we just alluded to it there. The national championships coming up. The national rankings, they are tight as always. And certainly there are some favorites. But man, the field looks like it could be as wide open as ever this season. Anything can happen in gymnastics. And that's what I love about this sport. You have some teams that are making their run up the rankings. And personally for me, I'm a big fan of Michigan. They are kind of the dark horse that are just burst into the top five. So I think I have my sights set on them, but Oklahoma and Florida will be hard to beat. Yeah, well, my heart should be with the Minnesota Golden Gophers since I am a Gopher, but man, you can't doubt the champs until they give up the national title, and Oklahoma still is the defending champion, so we'll see. It's going to be a fun one. I definitely do not want to miss it. Coming up tonight, 8 Eastern on the SEC Network. Do not miss. Co number one, Florida, is looking for an SEC championship, but they will have to get by LSU, Alabama, and Arkansas tonight in session two of the SEC Gymnastics Championship. That, in a way, could be your preview for the national championships. LSU and Florida have been going at it all season long. That'll be a fun one. Don't miss it. After the third rotation, it can't get any closer than that. Look at that. Tied at the top. What a turn of events. And Iowa State, they needed to keep it close. They are only .75 behind. And West Virginia, not exactly out of it, but they are having a great meet as well, trying to make that regional championship. Linda Burdett Good served as the head coach of the West Virginia Gymnastics Program for 37 seasons, leading the Mountaineers to four national championship appearances and 10 conference titles. A member of the WVU Hall of Fame, she mentored over 10 coaches currently in Division I programs. 
while continuing to be a part of the fundraising campaign to upgrade the facility of the program she has built. West Virginia honors Linda Burdett Good in celebration of Women's History Month. A lot of amazing women have paved the way for the athletes we are seeing competing today, and that is another one. But let's look back at that third rotation, Alicia. What went wrong for Oklahoma? Unfortunate mistakes for Oklahoma. Carrie Thomas under-rotated her front layout in one of her tumbling passes, and then Anastasia Webb had a little too much juice at the end of this tumbling pass, and that rebound put her back towards the corner that she didn't realize how close she was to being out of bounds and literally finished her dance for her routine with her leg over the line. And there's Lindsey Brown because of that little mishap for Anastasia Webb at the end of that floor routine. Lindsey Brown's got the lead in the all-around over Addie DeJesus and Anastasia Webb tied right there. So here's how things break out at the end. Oklahoma is on the vault. You can see they got that first one and a half on their feet. West Virginia goes to the balance beam. Iowa State, who's not out of this either. They are on the floor exercise in Denver, who is tied for the top spot right now. They are on the uneven bar. So it's all going to come down to who can hit the cleanest and who can stick more landings. It's really a three-team race. Iowa State, Denver, and Oklahoma. Here we go over to the floor exercise. Maddie Langkamp. Maddie opening up with a whip to double back. Wow. Great first pass. Maddie's a junior from Lannan, Wisconsin, in LaFleur's Gymnastics, which is located in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. LaFleur's an outstanding gymnastics family from the Wisconsin area. For today, half, Straddleful. Front half to split jump. Madeline closing out with a double pike. Short on that landing, she opened her double pike up too soon and stepped forward. So that will be a, a decent sized deduction for the judges, but. Strong start aside from that one step on that landing. Don't sleep on the Cyclones. Allie Stern a 9.85. Now Catherine Levisser. Oh. Almost stuck at your jingle one and a half. Didn't trust it, just took that step backwards, but that well was very well done. Yep, Allie Stern, as I mentioned, led off with a 9.85, a great starting score. We'll see what they do with Levisers score in the second spot. Four great vaults yet to go for Oklahoma. Denver on bars matches Oklahoma's starting score. Alexandria Ruiz puts up a 9.85. Now Rosie Casali. She needs to match Levisers score on vault in the second spot. See them wetting the bars down. That makes the bars a little bit tackier, which helps your grips stick on them a little bit better. Levisser a 9.9. .9. That's a career high for her. Can Denver match him? Shoot over handstand. Putting that handstand on the high bar. Double layout dismount. Oh, Small gotta stick it. Hop on that landing. You have to stick. There's no question about it. A hop is a miss. The other, the rest of the routine, Alicia. It seemed like it was almost perfect. Great cast handstands. Nice form. There's a few little deductions here and there, so I don't think that will be over. Maybe a nine eight five, nine eight seven five. Another big vaulter, Olivia Troutman. Small hop in that one and a half, but those are very minimal deductions. Good height, good distance. 
She took the hop and then the step turn, Alicia, though. It looked like she kind of had the door open a little bit on those landing deductions. Your thoughts? You know it's open for interpretation. I think if your <laughs> arms are up and you're already turning, they might let it slide. Go back over to floor exercise. Kelsey Boychuk. Opens up with a oh. big double pike. Steps out of bounds, unfortunately. And with a meet this close, that is a big error. Iowa State just point zero seven five behind the leader, so it's very close, but those deductions are costly. Second tumbling pass with a round off back one and a half front layout. Olivia Troutman on ball for Oklahoma, a 9.85. Rosie Casali matches Levisur. Maddie Landcamp, who led things off for Iowa State, a 9.75, which is a good score for her, but tough to keep pace with the two leaders. Kelsey closing out with a double tuck. Again, a step forward on a backwards tumbling pass. Judges will consider that a short landing as it did, so it means the skill was under-rotated. So she's going to get a deduction for that and going out of bounds. Now Anastasia Webb, she has scored a 10-0 on this event this season. One of those right now would be big. Come on, Not going to be a 10. Not going to be a, a 10, 10, but she had, she had the step, the hop, and the step turn again. We'll see what the judges do. They hit Troutman. The 985. Now Jessica Hutchinson trying to match Troutman's 985. Anastasia Webb score in a 9.925. That's big. Jessica's had a pretty clean routine thus far. Needs to stick this dismount. Double A. Oh, and she does. And that routine was, at, <laughs> that, this is going to be good. That was actually moments ago. She got a 9.9. .9. So after three gymnasts for Oklahoma and Denver in this rotation, Denver ex takes a half a tenth lead. Now, Evie Schopfer. Evie gets oh, tuck one and a half, man. under rotates, and unfortunately sits it down. She had a lot of height, but the flip of the rotation was just not there. She really looked for that landing early. A little bit scary when you're landing that direction straight-legged. And so now, Emily Glenn, who's in the fourth spot for Denver on bars. The pressure is on her. Oklahoma's still in a good spot. They've got one ball left to go, and they can drop Evie Schopfer's score. But their margin for error is absolutely zero. Three gymnasts left to go for Denver. As Sophia Steinmeier mounts the floor exercise. She follows Kelsey Boychek's 9.65. So Iowa State is going to count a 9.75. So unless there's a complete collapse by Oklahoma and Denver, it looks like Iowa State will stay in that third position. Opens up with a front handspring front double full. Evie Schultz for score on vault, by the way, 9.35 for that fall. They have Emma LaPinta yet to go, and that score will have to count for the Sooners. Up one and a half front lay. Quickly updating bar scores Emily Glenn a 9.875. So after four gymnasts for both Oklahoma and Denver, it is still tied. Obviously, Evie Schofer had that fall, but Riley Mundell is the next gymnast to go for Denver in the fifth spot for them. Double pie glass pass for Sophia.
Good job for Sophia and the Cyclones. Now here's Emma LaPinta. She has got to hit the last gymnast for the Sooners, keeping hope alive. Yurchenko full, big hop on that landing. This Start is going to be really interesting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Starts from a 9.95, the Yurchenko full. And so that hop is going to, I mean, it's minimum one tenth, maybe a little bit more. It was a big hop. So if my elementary school math, which is about as far as I got with it, is correct, either Riley Mundell or Lindsey Brown, the last two gymnasts to go for Denver, have to beat Emma LaPinta's score, which just came up of a 9.775 to win the Big 12 team championship. You see Coach moving between the bars. They are allowed to be there for safety as long as they do not touch the athlete. There is no deduction. Double A. Almost stuck. It just some tiny scoots back with those feet. That routine was nice. Wow, what an absolute shocker this would be. Denver in fourth place after the first rotation. Wow. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championships first round begins Sunday noon Eastern. ABC will have Middle Tennessee and Tennessee at 2 Eastern, followed by Jackson State and Baylor and ESPN with Mercer, South Carolina, then High Point and UConn. All games also available on the ESPN app. A lot of great sports in March. So Lindsey Brown... Lindsey Brown is the last gymnast to go. Maya Sundstrom, if I'm correct in uh, that correction of our last gymnast, a 985 means that this routine right here is a curtain call because the Denver Pioneers are going to be your Big 12 team champions. All she needs to do is finish this routine on her feet. Double A, and she sticks it. What a competition for Denver. Unbelievable. What a comeback. After one rotation, they were in fourth place, but they just kept scratching and clawing. They did take advantage of some Oklahoma mistakes, but that is what it's all about here in the sport of gymnastics. The Denver Pioneers hit when they needed to, and they are going to be your Big 12 team champions. Wow. Wow, back over to the balance beam. And there's still some drama to be had as Kendra Combs gets ready to mount the balance beam because the West Virginia Mountaineers are trying to qualify for the regional championships coming into today. They were two spots out. And Jason Butts felt like a 196 and a half would just about do it for them. They were on that pace heading into this rotation. However, they started with a 9-2. Rachel Horning got things straightened out with a 9.85 in the second spot. Abby Pearson, though, a 9.675 in the third spot. So they're going to have to count that score. Beautiful front aerial to back tuck. Switch side, just a small balance check with the arms. Lindsey Brown is perfection. She finishes a meet with a 10.0, and that will also solidify the Big 12 all around champion, that amazing athlete. Okay. Stuck that dismount. They got to do it. Jason Butts knows that every landing could be the difference between the team advancing or not to the regional championships, which again, they are hosting here in Morgantown. So they want to be represented with a full squad. Back over to floor exercise. 
Iowa State. This is Andrea Maldonado. She's in the fifth spot, just one athlete yet to go. That would be Addie De Jesus. Opens up with a front, double twist punch front. Got close to that going out of bounds, but scooted her feet back very quickly. Second pass for Hanspring front one and a half. Andrea is a senior from Bayamon, Puerto Rico. A Puerto Rican national team member in 2015 World Championship team member. Double pike, last pass. Nicely done. Iowa State trying to finish out a solid competition for them. Maddie Diop right before Andrea got a 9.925. That is a career high score for her as well. They started off with a career high score from Maddie Langkamp as well. As we see the associate head coach there on the right, Linus Gaveka. And the judges rehashing some of the routines, Alicia. I don't know what the debate could be. You see her hand, you would in think she's indicating about handstands based yep, on what yep. she's doing. We can sit here and guess all day long. They're probably talking about meeting up after the competition for dinner or something, but. <laughs> It that is, is what one of the one of the challenges of the sport of gymnastics is that is it, it is subjective. Judges call it like they see it, and that's not how we always see it as well. So it's a challenge, but I feel like they might have got it right here tonight. Chloe Asper finishing things off for West Virginia, sticking that one and a half dismount. Kiana Lewis put up a nine point eight seven five. However, McKenna Lennon right before her a nine point four. So it does not look to me that that 196, mid 196 is gonna be a reality for West Virginia, despite it overall a very good competition heading into that final rotation. Addy DeJesus, the last gymnast to compete here at the 2021 Big 12 Championships. Opening up with a double tuck. Addie's second tumbling pass. Round off one and a half punch front layout step out. Switch side, straddle full. Last tumbling pass, double pike. What a fantastic competition for all these teams here tonight. This was so exciting to watch. She is pumped. The Cyclones should be happy. They are peaking at the right time, and that is all you can ask for as a coach. Do your best performances in the postseason. That's exactly what the Iowa State Cyclones have done. The Denver Pioneers, it wasn't perfect at the beginning, 
but down the stretch they got the job done, took advantage of mistakes by the number one team in the country, and they are a deserving champion. When we come back, we'll crown that champion here in Morgantown. Regional Gymnastics Championships, April 2nd 